I'm only going to go through a couple more scriptures here, okay? It says on the next slide, stand your ground in the moment of truth. Again, if you've been in our church, you know that. I have shared this thought before. But partly what happens when you're in a time of crisis like this is that your root system starts to surface and you realize the things that have really been cornerstone truths. Each one of us has different verses like that. And this is one of them for me. Partly as a worship leader, I've been studying the life of David for a long time. And what the man we're about to read about is one of David's mighty men. And uh, it's from 2 Samuel 23. His name is Eleazar. And it says, he was one of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle. And the men of Israel had retreated. Okay, now, this is what the analogy I want to give you that today we're in a battle, we're in a war. And fear causes you to retreat. But we sang the song, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. This man isn't singing that necessarily, but he's living it in the way he's acting. I'll just read it again. This man, Eleazar, was one of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered for battle. So David brings his army and this mighty man named Eleazar, and they're all gathered for battle. But then it says the men of Israel had retreated. This is not who we want to be today. We don't want to be people that retreat. It's a moment of truth time. I don't want you to be foolish. I don't want you to take undue risks. You don't test God, right? We don't throw ourselves off a cliff, it says in the New Testament, because we're going to try to prove when the devil tries to tempt us to do something. No, whatever your faith will allow is what you do, but don't do less than what your faith will allow you to do. And this man had the faith to stand there, even though everybody else was retreating. In his moment of truth, he stood his ground. So not only do I want to tell you that Jesus defeated death, because he did, and you don't have to be tormented by the fear of death. Remember what Paul said, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your sting? Mm -mm. Jesus defeated it. He said it. Jesus said to Martha, your brother Lazarus will live. Anyone who believes in me will never die. He wants us here on this planet. We are his body. We are his ambassadors. Seek the Lord in this time of trouble. Break off that spirit of calamity and, and terror that's trying to grip your heart. And stand your ground in the moment of truth like this man of God, Eleazar. It says in verse 10, even though the rest of the army was retreating, he arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand stuck to the sword. <laughs> And we know in the New Testament, it says the Bible, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Boy, is that a great picture or what? His hand became one with the sword. He became one with his weapon. I hope you can become one with your weapon. This is what you need. But why I alluded to Dutch sheets earlier is because it's not a weapon if you just think it. <laughs> it's only a weapon when you say it. The word rhema is the spoken word. So become one with your weapon in the decade of the decree. Speak it out of your mouth. Stand on the promises of God. Memorize scripture. Some of you are spending time with things that aren't redemptive. You have a lot of free time on your hands. Get in the word. I'm going to say it again. There's hundreds of hours of videos right on our YouTube channel. You could spend a lot of time going through those videos and looking up the verses and stop it and looking at the transcripts. And Why not? What else are you going to do? So much of the things we do is like chewing gum. It tastes good, but there's no nourishment. Become one with your weapon. This is the bread of life. This is food. This is what will keep you out of that spirit of fear, out of that mindset. When everybody else is panicking, you're standing your ground. In the moment of truth, you become one with your weapon like Eleazar. It's only a short little portion of scripture. It says, his hand stuck to the sword. And what happened? The Lord brought about a great victory that day. This is each one of us each day. You have family members. You have friends. You have people that don't know the Lord that are still subject to that torment of the fear of death. God loves those people. He said he would pour out his spirit on all flesh. So even though they haven't acknowledged it, he said he would pour it out on all flesh. So try to commune with that 
part of God that's in them and ask the Lord, show me what to say. Show me how I can open my mouth and let packets of life come out of my mouth into the hearts of the people that I'm talking to. This should be the time that many people turn to God because they realize the things they've built their houses on are sinking sand. Jesus said, no, the one who listens and does what I tell him to do is like a man who built his house on a rock. The storm came, the winds blew, everything else was blown down, but that house that was on the rock still stood. People that don't know the Lord have built their house on sinking sand. And you're not good advice. You're good news. You're an ambassador of the kingdom. I'm going to give you a psalm to focus on, and then I'll, I'll wind it down because I see what time it is, 11.05. Not that you have so much to do in your house back there, but anyway, my wife will start texting me. <laughs> psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Wow, could you say that with me? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Please remember that. Have this one right on the tip of your tongue. Memorize it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, and I could add it here, though coronavirus is on the move, Selah, that means pause and meditate. It's a song, Selah, because verse 4 is going to be the refrain. No matter what else is swirling around you, everything that can be shaken right now is being shaken. All that swirling, verse 4 says, there's a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. We've been trying to encourage all our folks to take communion daily. This has been going on for a long time now, since my wife had uh, a word at the end of last year as we were crossing into this year. At King of Kings, we always do a fast at the beginning of the year, a 21-day fast, and we got the, the theme that we were going to rebuild our personal altars. What happened to me when I was um, working for a different company, um, I was going to work every morning and I would do this. I would have communion at my desk. I would get in very early. That was part of my job was to be the first one there because I was writing a market commentary that would go out at 8 o'clock every day. And I had to be there at 6.30. So nobody else was in the office. And I would just kneel at my desk and take communion and sanctify my workspace right there and commit what I was doing that day to the Lord and then before I would hit send at 8 o'clock, when that email had to go out, I would put my hand on the screen and say, Lord, use this. Even though it's a secular company and, and it's people that don't know you mostly, not all, but mostly, please use this to get this information out so people will make good decisions about their finances. And I realized that something different happened when I sanctified my space. Something different happened. I don't want to make this into a religious ritual, okay? It's eating the bread and taking the blood, that can be turned into a religious ritual. No, I'm just saying, wherever you are, make it your altar. Take communion in the morning. Start on your knees because that's a position of surrender and say, Lord, I know I can do nothing without you today, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I'm starting in this position of submission to you because I don't know what the day is going to bring me, but you are going to be there with me as I go through it. And I don't want to default into my flesh mode. I don't want to default into fear mode. I don't want to be influenced by all the swirling around me right now. I want to be locked in to true north on my compass. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. That's the downloads that we receive from heaven. When you make that personal altar and you kneel down and you take communion, there's a river from heaven that's flowing down and that's bringing us life. And we are just like that tree in Psalm 1 that's planted by the rivers of living water that brings forth much fruit in its season. 